Hey, you're restoring a classic car and you're thinking about replacing the brake and fuel lines on the frame rail? Well, that's what we did. We bought some pre-bent lines for a 3 16 inch brake line, a 5 16 inch fuel line. We routed it on the car, had to make some tunes and some adjustments and tweaks to the bending. So if you want to see how that gets done, stay tuned. Hi, welcome back to Restoring Christine. My name is Bill, this 56 Chevy Bel Air. Her name is Christine. This channel is Restoring Christine. It's the video blog that's documenting this build from beginning to end, a complete restoration frame off. I'm doing everything with my own two hands in my garage. And where I'm at right now is I'm just getting ready to put the body back onto the frame. So that's what we're gonna do this week. I'm gonna show you a few things before we get started. And uh, let's get into it. All right, so there's Christine as she sits right now. Still don't have the doors on, uh, the fenders, everything's off because I've got the bracing inside of the inside of the greenhouse. So I can't do anything yet until I get the frame back on, but I've been working on things that are not easy to video document. I've been working on this firewall. I got it cleaned up, a few of the holes that we wanted to patch. Uh, the flange that I did when I redid the floor. When I put that in, I had to clean up the flange and, and uh, grind some things down and paint that, get that primed and prepped. I went into the wheel wells and uh, oh yeah, boy, isn't that wonderful? Look how terrific, hey, undercoating. <laughs> that was what I was talking about. So I did all of this work and it's like, how do you video that? You know, how do you, how do you video, you know, doing undercoating in the wheel well? So I couldn't do that. And uh, I filled in, <laughs> I filled in with, in between with a video on uh, shop manuals, which is a value to a handful of people, but apparently a very few handful of people. So that video is like, it doesn't have a whole lot of views, but hey, it's out there. It's what I could do. I'm trying to keep up. So now I'm getting ready to put this frame back underneath there. And what I've got to do is I've got to put the fuel line on. I have to put the brake line on. Uh, and there's a few other things to, to get ready. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll it. I'm going to pick this car off of the wooden stands that I have that's supporting it up. I'm going to take it off, uh, roll the frame underneath it, and bolt it back in. So I've got body bushings ready to go. I've got the brake line, the gas line ready to go, fuel. Um, hopefully I got air in the tires because I need to do that after I get it up. And I've also got that new CPP steering box. I need to mount that with the drag link and the tie rod ends and get so that I don't have the two wheels going all over the place as I'm trying to push it. And uh, yeah, so it's a lot to do. I'm going to tackle this and then let's, let's just see how this goes. So stick with me. All right, so I'm at the frame and I want to show you a few things. I got the brake line and the fuel line and I ordered those and they come pre-bent. But unfortunately, it's a long straight object that's some 10 or 12 feet long. And in order to ship it, they need to pre-bend it some more. So you get, a mul you get multiple bends in the line that you don't know which one is actually the real factory bend and which one is not. So a lot of times with these, with these brake lines, I redid everything on that 71 Cutlass that I have that I restored in 2013 to 2016. I did that car and I brought, bought all the lines from inline fuel or inline tube. I'm sorry. I bought them all from inline tube and they fit pretty good, but I had to tune and tweak them. So I have a couple of, I have a tubing bender for large diameter, for like fuel line. And I have a, a tubing bender for a smaller diameter for like brake line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to tune and tweak these lines in order to put them on the car. So that's what I'm going to do next. So let me show you what I'm working with. This is a 3 16 inch diameter brake line and it's aluminized steel. I'm going to clip it with these Earl's Performance Plumbing. Uh, you might be able to read it better on the other bag. Earl's clips and these are um, metal clips with a little rubber insert. And then I'm using self self drilling, self tapping screws. I got number 12s, three quarters of an inch. Uh, number 12 is is in between three sixteenths and a quarter. Um, number 10 is three sixteenths, and number 14 is quarter inch. 
So number 12 is somewhere in between there, but that's what I'm going to use in there. And these are self-drilling, self-tapping, and I'm going to use those atta attach it to the frame. Now, when I did my brake line before, my brake line that I pulled off, it was on the inside of the frame, and the fuel line was actually routed on this side of the frame over here. But when you order the fuel line, it'll tell you inside of frame or outside of frame. And the dual exhaust cars, which this was not, this was originally a six cylinder, but the V8 dual exhaust cars had the exhaust routed from the factory underneath this indent and underneath this indent. So on the six cylinder cars, they routed this on the inside of the frame rail, the fuel, the fuel line. And on the V8 cars, they mounted it on the outside. So that's what I bought is I bought an outside of the fuel uh, outside of the frame rail fuel line and I'm gonna have to bend that around on the outside but the brake line the brake line what I'm gonna do is I've got to come from this connection where the rear end the brake hose comes to this clip and then from there the brake line continues so I'm gonna route it I'm actually gonna tuck it inside of these frame rails inside of these extensions these legs and then when I route it out it'll uh, it'll be tucked nice and neatly underneath there and then I'm gonna have my when I do my fuel line I've got a fuel my fuel pump that was mounted on the driver's side now it'll be mounted on the passenger side because that's where the uh, the fuel is normally routed on that side and that's where the fuel pump is if I had a mechanical fuel pump is I'm gonna have an electric so let's do that let me show you this tool so this is from AutoZone this is an OEM tubing bender and I had one that, that did big diameter lines and I had another one that did small diameter lines but um, I bought this one and it's got it's got the dies for uh, four different sizes so it goes all the way from brake line all the way up to uh, fuel line so that's that's good but the way this thing works it's very simple it's just a um, two pries and a, and a fulcrum so you you put your line in here and then when you when you bend when you pull down in the handle it pushes this up into the line and causes the the line to bend so what I'm doing is I'm trying to right now, unfortunately my pre-bent line, I'm trying to unprebend it. <laughs> so I'm just taking it and taking my time with it, straightening it back out, and let's see if I can get this one, unbend it. Yeah. So it's got a little bit of a bend in it, and I'm gonna unbend it by just prying on it like this. Again, I might need to move my, my lever. Yeah, a little bit and just pinch and it doesn't take much you know, I got a little bit of kink in it I'll straighten that out but I was trying to do it to, to show you on the camera but now I've straightened out all the pre-bends on, on this side so I can route it the way I want so let me do that you what it was doing so I got my fuel my fuel pump this is my old fuel pump I'm still going to planning on reusing it um, it's not very expensive it's a fifty dollar mr. gasket pump uh, but I like it and I've checked this model number 12 s I can still get this for 50 bucks at AutoZone or from summit so um, I'm going to continue to reuse that so I'm planning on mounting it over here so in order to mount on the side of the frame rail I knew I had to di divert the the brake line around it so that's what I did is I just did that then I'll be able to attach this to the fuel rail when I do I mean uh, to the frame rail I want to do the fuel line I'll be able to break it here and there and that'll take care of that remember my last video when I went over all the shop manuals and I did the factory assembly instruction manual and I put everybody to sleep in that last episode well they actually serve a purpose <laughs> so here's the uh, diagram that's in the manual it shows you where the brake lines and the fuel lines are supposed to be run so you can see there's a clip here on this frame rail and I don't have that one on mine I don't know what model it belongs to maybe it's convertible but I think the convertible has an X so I don't know what that goes to 
but it runs in between these this frame leg and then it runs on top of this frame leg and then it runs behind the dash leg that would uh, would be up up here so I have mine routed you can see I went through it I'm gonna stay that route now one thing that I'm aware of this is supposed to go behind a dash leg and come around back to here uh, they show you that layout and what that detail is up in this area but if you remember I said that I changed my master cylinder from a single master cylinder like the factory would have provided to one with two, two cylinders. So that changes the brake line configuration. So I have two brake lines coming across the front cross member and one of those routes directly to the back because one of the two cylinders on the master cylinder, one of the two chambers feeds the back and the other one feeds the front. So it's a little bit different from mine. I went in the garage and went and got my two uh, brake lines for the front and I'm going to make sure that that brake line that I'm putting on that comes from the back to the rear aligns with that but I'm going to I'm going to keep with my alignment that goes through here I'm good with that but from here it's supposed to bend up and around and I need to straighten this out and get that to bend there so that's what I'm going to do next bracket kicks it up and over around the corner of the frame rail so the the kicker from the firewall is supposed to come here so that shouldn't touch and it'll be up and around here now I got on this edge of the frame rail and I got enough slack in here that where I know with my my line will be here but if, if this is this is at least long enough so if it's too long what I'll do is I'll, I'll get a flare tool and I'll just trim it back and then shove it and then tighten it. So I'll have to tune all that once I get all my, my brake lines routed. And I can't put my two front brake lines on here yet because uh, if, if you might be able to see over there, the two kickers that go up to the master cylinder, that's gonna be completely in the way when I push this underneath the body. So I'm gonna leave that off. So now let's get to the, to the fuel line. All right, so this is what I was talking about. I've got the, the fuel line. <laughs> about in a position where it's supposed to go and that's supposed to trail up and over the frame rail it's not bent that way this is supposed to trail around something over here and it's not bent that way it's supposed to go through that and it's bent around it it's supposed to go along the frame rail and it doesn't <laughs> this is going to kick up this is supposed to be over here so can you buy them pre-bent sure that's what i did but i'm not necessarily buying it for all the pre-bends i'm buying it for the length the route, the quality of the material, the fittings, you know, for it to be the original part. But as far as the fitment, that's something that you just got to deal with. And I'm going to tune it and tweak it with the bending, um, the bending tool like I have been. So that's what we're going to do. Now, the good thing on this fuel line for me is I get to cut it because <laughs> I've got this fuel pump that's in the middle that's going to break up the length. So I get to cut it and I'm going to use a tubing cutter to do that. And that gives me a little more flexibility if this is all just one line, but it's not. It's going to be cut in two. So let's do that. So now I'm trying to fit the last piece in of the fuel line, which is this one. So now I cut it, I cut it back here. So I cut it back there, and I'm slipping it inside of the this bracket, and I'm gonna have to cut it to length. But here's where it comes around here, where this leg that's on the firewall, and I'm pretty sure I can bend this over here and then divert it up over the and then kind of let it let it hang out here. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to go look at the firewall and see what this all looks like to make sure that this is going to clear. Let's go take a look at that. 
So there's the leg that comes off of the firewall and that's gonna sit on the frame. So you see the frame is, the frame comes here and then it dips down. And I need to make sure that the lines don't interfere with this. So the frame where that that is, that, um, that bracket I think is off to the side. So we'll have to look at that and see, but I'm pretty sure that this is above and trailing back. So as long as I am underneath that and clear and in here, I think I'll be okay. Let's go take a look at that real quick. Yeah, I think we're gonna be okay because this is where that, that leg lands and the two brackets come off of it. And then we're tucked real tight on the frame rail, on the frame rail here so we know we have enough clearance. So what I'm going to do is this piece needs to be cut back there. I haven't cut it to length, but I've shoved it inside of the frame rail, or I'm sorry, inside of the, the, the bracket here, this dog leg. I'm gonna keep that bend. I'm gonna ride it right, right back there. I'll bend this, I'll divert this over and let it ride and float, float out here and that's where we're gonna stop it. I'll just straighten all that up when I get the, the body back in the frame and I'm doing everything in the engine bay. Let's get that done. like I want it. Excuse the crows. The crows have been making racket all spring. They can ruin the audio of the video. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna attach this to the frame. I've got it bent here, trailing up. Uh, I'll probably increase this bend a little bit. And then it, it, it kind of floats over the over the brake line. So what I'm going to do, bend this a little bit more. I'm going to leave it float in the engine bay, and I'm going to straighten that out and get that like I like it um, after <clears throat> I put everything together. Um, if I have to remove this, I'm pretty sure I'll be able to pull this. I'll be able to pull this line out. A little, bit better, a little bit too much, a little bit too strong. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna screw this in so you can see these self-tapping screws, how they do in real time. And then we'll wrap this video up and come back to this uh, for the next thing. So again, all right, so I got these Earl's clamps, self-tapping, self-drilling, self self-tapping, number 12 by three quarter screw. Go ahead and put one right in the frame rail right here and you can kind of see in real time how that attaches. So I got my cordless drill with a, um, a quarter inch socket adapter on it. And now we're just going to drill it until it drills through and then tightens. Go ahead and get um, get this done, and then we'll wrap it up. All right, that's going to do it for the fuel and brake line installs. Let me show you how it came out. So the fuel line's just hanging rough right now in the engine bay, as is the brake line, just from from the firewall forward. I'll straighten it out when I get the everything in here, and I'll know what to do. But here it's routed nice and neatly around the frame through the two dog legs of the um, or the, the brackets for the body got my fuel pump mounted I need to put a couple of pieces of, of flex line in between some fuel hose brake line is diverted around the fuel pump jumps up over the frame sits back here nicely at the rear bracket the fuel line comes in here and tucks nicely and neatly against the frame rail and then is routed roughly into the center where it's underneath the axle housing and this is where the fuel sending unit is going to be on the back of the back of the fuel tank but that's going to do it so the next time we tune in it's going to be putting the body back on the frame rail i'm really excited about that so that'll be the next episode but until then 
appreciate everybody that watches my videos. I appreciate all the subscribers. If you're liking my videos, give me a thumbs up. And if you're enjoying the channel, you're getting something useful out of it, I appreciate a subscription. So we will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. Cheers. Thank <laughs> you.